Um, in lieu of the provisions, the public body may sub submit the maps and things like that to the Office of the Attorney General for issuance of a certificate of no objection. Um, but then it goes on to say, though, such practice shall not be given effect until the Attorney General has issued the certification and, um, you know, if the Attorney General doesn't say anything for 60 days, then, you know, so I think that's that got potential to drag on. Mm -hmm. What can we, what can, what action would you ex request tonight to get this train rolling down the track? 1B. 1B. All right. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. authorize us to do the advertising and necessary public notice. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of changes, and I don't want to even look at it from the standpoint you want to declare whether you're Republican or Democrat because we're all Blackstone, Blackstonians. But I mean, Ward C is changing huge amounts. So if you've got people that are even thinking about running, yeah, I mean, we need to get. It well, you need to advertise this for public hearing. But like I said, we are all all Blackstonians. But I, I've heard there might be some folks running as a D or an R. Mr. Tom Taylor, briefly, yes. Um, on that map that you got there, what is uh, what is the status of War Eight? We're putting you in a Republican stronghold. Yeah, I figured. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel a dirty insurrection coming too. I feel it's clear. I can tell the six sixty nine two twenty two. You you will still be in you will still be in, you will still be in Ward A. I'm, I'm team I'm team Philip right now. I'm talking to him. Okay. <laughs> what what is member what do members of council think about what, Plan One B to advertise that for hearing? Can we proceed with uh, make a motion to advertise one B for public hearing? You can with that and authorize us to advertise it. Public hearing. I got one more thing. The public notice is right. Public comment. Public comment. Public comment. Mr. Uh, Taylor, you have one more brief point. Uh, Miller, you see this? Uh, you comprehended all this? <laughs> yeah, this, I'm, this, no, I'm looking at it too. Okay, because this, this is way above my. <laughs> all right, so I would entertain a motion for council to proceed with. To expedite the public hearing and public comment period for the proposed 1B. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. So moved. Mr. Morgan has moved. I second. Mr. Miller has seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries 7 0. Unfinished business number two, you have the airport. We have a request from the town manager to a rather large request to take care of the uh, apron. Uh, we've got a grant for $458,400 with a local match of $114,600. And generally speaking, Mr. Norvac, this is to rehabilitate and repave the apron at the airport. Mm -hmm. and, and the taxiway. The taxiway. And the so taxiway that goes, if you're familiar with the airport, we have a fuel farm. Right. There's a concrete portion to that that was added some time ago. This is the asphalt portion between the fuel farm and the FBO or the, the administration building. Okay. Pretty old asphalt, and we've sealed it since I've been here, but the, it's cracked, and I just don't think we can keep sealing it. So this would be basically milling it out to a certain depth, I mean a significant depth, putting base in, uh, reclaiming and reusing the asphalt and any stone that's there as base, and then repaving. And the match will come from the, I'm sorry, the match will come from the town's aviation jet fuel sales. But I note to you, I don't have $114,000 of cash sitting in that fund right now. I'm going to have to borrow it from our sales, and then that's where Jennifer much, comes in to make sure. Have? Huh? How much do you have? It's not $10,000. We're under 10000 How long would it take you to make that up? Uh, one good summer. If you, if you look at your budget, I mean, we have several hundred thousand dollars of fuel sales. So we expect if. It was the, last expended recently because we did the shed. Yeah. We paid ourselves back for the maintenance building out there. Yeah. We did the same kind of That's why thing. It's low right now. Yeah. We depleted it pretty good. So you were asking for a motion from council to accept the grant and to proceed with a local match at the timetable when we have the funds available. We'll get it paid back as quick as we can and to authorize. Um, I think we need to set a timeline to that. It needs to be within two yeah. years. Oh, yeah, 24 months. Yeah. If you want to do that, set that's a, no problem. Set a definite. Okay. I mean, the, but the negative is what happens if we don't? Come back to you and I get a good general fund money. Well, but said two years, you said we could do it in one good why don't summer. we do this? No other projects will be taken on until this is paid back. If you're cool with that. At the airport. At the airport. Hold off on <laughs> new capital projects. At the airport, right? At the airport. No new capital projects until this one is paid back. Who would like to make that motion? Good. So Mr. Morgan has moved. Mr. Miller has seconded. This will call a roll call vote. Uh, any questions? The airport's very important. I, I, I know. 
very few of us fly, but there, there's a pilot community out there. It's a, it's a gateway to the town. It, and I think the reason, if you look at all the different communities that were awarded, do you have Captain Allman? I was going to say something about it. Yes, Captain Allman. <laughs> I work out there, and the problem we have now is we have a lot of, we're seeing a lot more larger aircraft traffic coming to, coming to the FDS. Right now, that, that asphalt that leads in front of the FDO is kind of an unknown factor. It's definitely deteriorating, but we don't really know how much weight you can put on it. So while in the wintertime it hadn't been a problem, the asphalt really hard. But when you get to that summertime, we had probably 40 trips from a 20,000-pound jet come in, and probably three from a 50 and a couple from 30. So while it wasn't a problem because it's been cold, it's going to be a problem in the summer when it sinks up to the axle because we don't know how much weight mm -hmm. it is. Now, we can, there is other options of parking them on the military side, but this is a lot, a big improvement to our, to our side. So you definitely think this is worthwhile and the sooner the better? And I will tell you this, that it's a lot higher than engineer's estimate. Engineer's estimate was in the mid 300s. I remember. And so this thing was high. We weren't sure Department of Aviation was going to approve it, but they approved 100% or 80% of the project as requested. So they, they're providing $458,000 of grant. Two reasons. One, I think they're flush with some maybe federal monies, ARPA monies that are out there. And two, this was the first meeting of the year, and they always – you're more successful the first meeting of the year because they run out of money toward the end of the year. So um, if the motion could also include entering into agreement with J.R. Caskey, who's the contractor. Mr. Nash, do you amend your motion to include that? Uh, Mr. Morgan, do you amend? Okay. Yeah. Mr. Morgan, I'll second. Do you second that? You need a roll call vote starting with Mr. Nash. Aye. 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 That motion carries 7-0. We have under unfinished business number three, code blue. Um, this is something that our finance director was going to discuss last month. It's a lot of stuff in here. Um, Jennifer, I, I, I admire your uh, attention to detail. What, what basically, in a nutshell, is this? Oh, this is their bid. Okay. This, this, is, this is how they bid our stuff. So we've basically grown with Code Blue. So the town hall was the only department that was under IT agreement with them. But they've helped uh, they help us down at the bus shop. Um, they help over at the PD, and now they're doing public works. Just when computers don't work, when they can't scan, any issues we have, they can just remote in. Um, to be completely honest, I was thinking um, that we could just a la carte it this year to try to save, but I am in the process of trying to get some pricing on new accounting software, and they are very helpful with that, like making sure everything can cross over. So basically what this is, is giving us a, a lower hourly rate for IT services. And their bid is just based on what they think we'll spend. Um, you, we do have certain set costs that cover a certain amount of IT hours for us. If you go closer to, I think it's page 13 of 23, it breaks down like your one-time amount we have to pay and then our monthly expenses. But I would ask that we renew our contract with them for another 12 months, and we'll look at it again. I have a big spreadsheet where I studied it based on there's just no contract rate in this one, and um, right now we need to renew it. Now, I don't think every department needs to renew it. Um, a definitely town hall, and I don't believe Mary has it in her budget. So I would just ask that you allow us to determine which department really needs that monthly reoccurring. Um, I haven't talked to Sam either. I was hoping he was here tonight. I wasn't sure if they need that monthly reoccurring either. What, what does it cost us a year roughly right now? I've looked through so many numbers on this. 64. 64. Well, we've spent 64000 but th this year. Years. But that's because they also did a lot of our upgrades. So they did like a ten thousand dollar phone upgrade here. Okay. And so we we have not spent sixty four thousand on IT services, but we have they've won the bid on a lot of our um, phone upgrades. Cares reimbursed stuff like the new cameras and or the projector. And well, they the did three phone installs, so that's thirty grand right there. They did the PD, they did ours, and they did um, fire department. So this figure should come down. Like you said, it, we don't have anybody on staff that's an IT specialist, so it's cheaper than having an IT specialist. What's our What's in the budget this year? That we current this current year. You got to stay up to date. That's one thing about it. Um, especially when the 
business we're in with the billing and well, we're also <coughs> people's. I think we had um, eighteen thousand in the budget this year. Do you think without doing upgrades, we can stay at eighteen thousand for this coming year? Not based off of how he's got us tiered, because he he backs up every computer here. I'm paying um, for storage in the cloud. So they back up, they do all our patches. They're going in when we're closed and making sure everything is backed up. We get extra here, and we also get an extra layer of antivirus and like spam so stuff. Playing pre budget, what do you think? Pre budget, I've got 22 grand in for admin. Okay. And that's what I plan. That should cover it. Correct. Yeah. I don't want us to go into it and say, oh, well, last year we had 18. No, and I was going to let the departments right. determine if they were if they needed to do the service agreement or not, but that'll come with the department head request. We can live with an $8,000 increase as opposed to $4,000. So I'm budgeting $22,000. Okay, so so a, a good motion would be what? To renew the IT agreement for the Town Hall and, and allow the other department discretionary on whether they're the other big one is the PD, and that's the one I need to talk to Sam and Chief about. I don't know if they, that's a kind of yeah. bigger monthly call. I can imagine that, that that could be pretty significant, but um, this is a firm based in Mechanicsville. Our finance director and staff are pleased with this service. Uh, the motion is to renew with Code Blue and give staff discretion on where Code Blue, what other departments would be assisted. I'd entertain that motion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nash has moved. Is there a second? Colonel Tom. Second. Colonel Tom, a second. Any further discussion? Uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote starting with Mr. Nash. Aye. 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 That motion carries 7 0. And we have one other request. We had discussed, we've been served by Robinson Farmer Cox and Associates for well over 30 years. They audit us every year. And so I believe council or staff or both had suggested maybe getting some bids, see what else is out there. Jennifer had come to me this week stating that because we are changing the system, that as long as they're reasonable, we need to try to get through this year and then do it next year. I just ask we not change auditors and accounting systems within the same, same year. year. So yeah. it's a lot to yeah. RSP yeah. and Brittany and I both tag team that. And right. I just don't know that we could properly that one assess definitely work it auditors. Yeah, so I, I think that's wise, Mary. So no action at this time. Okay. Just put it on the agenda for next year at this time. Th thank you, Jennifer. Next, we have some good news that we're kind of being asked to keep secret, but it's old news. The town of Blackstone has won a grant. For $250,000 to remove lead, asbestos, and underground fuel tanks at the armory and also to assist with some of the remodeling and re re rehabilitation. Well, this Wherever is mostly abatement. Mostly this, abatement? Yeah, okay. This is abatement. We applied for $268,000, and that included reimbursing us for some uh, uh, previous work. <coughs> and it also had $8,000 in there for the uh, administration of the grant by the Commonwealth Regional Council who helped us submit it. That was cut out. So we're at 250. Hopefully the work will be less, and then hopefully we can take the difference. But this is really abatement, and not for remodeling. This is the abatement side of stuff. It's okay. a start. Pardon? It's a start. It's a start. 250 thousand dollars. I don't have any performance agreements before you tonight. All we've got is an email from Department uh, right. Economic Development. They're gonna make Department a big Street. announcement sometime this they week. They said I by the end of February we should get something, but here we are, at the end of February, we haven't got anything. But else. this is good news, folks. That's a quarter mil for the armory to get rid of the. Anything in there that could be hazardous to someone's health? Can I point out to council, this is not included in the $2 million budget. Okay. This is in addition. Uh, the $2 million budget was straight up construction, didn't have furnishings, computers, and we're working, Chastity's working, uh, again, with Department of Housing and Community Development, and we're probably going to tap into some things with the, um, the um, rural development folks for furnishings and for technology improvements. And we've made an IRF uh, uh, planning grant. Uh, put that together, asking for a consultant to tell us what we need to do to get that broadband from the water tank to the armory and how do we disseminate it through downtown or the rest of at least the commercial areas of Blackstone. The last mile is very expensive. I've been, I can't say disappointed, but I don't think there's a big, uh, the cavalry ain't coming from the tobacco commission on this project. That I, I don't think that's going to be the case. And uh, as you can see, $89,000 for a $13 million project was kind of on the low side, I thought, and half of that being loan. So we're really going to focus on Department of Housing, Community Development, and Rural Development for additional outfitting grants. Okay. Right. Do we need a motion to approve to accept this? Not, not a time. I don't have a performance agreement. Gotcha. I'd like to read it beforehand. Very good. Well, this is great news, and we thank, this, thank you, Mr. Town Manager and staff, for, for grabbing this. Um, next item up, I'm going to ask if uh, basically 
I guess a question. Have we, I know we've received some Black History Heroes nominations. We have. That deadline is today. I'm going to announce the committee on our March 9th meeting. Because I've got to be careful if I appoint three members of council, that's a council meeting. So I'm going to probably have two members of council, a staff member or two. I might be on there because I don't, I don't count as a council member. I just found that from a lawyer. Um, so basically, if you see me talking to a council member, I can talk to three council members can't talk or becomes a public meeting if they're talking about public business. But I always thought that I couldn't talk to two council members for that reason. But I can talk to two council members. Really? I got that from a Sands Anderson attorney. Mr. I do <laughs> so I will, um, I will announce on March 6th the committee. We'll start going through those applications um, and announce the winners on Juneteenth. Uh, unfinished business number seven, you have the sale of uh, Babs Lane property, which we've been discussing. You have a proposed performance agreement in there. I think you guys did ask at one of the last council meetings that uh, by February 1st, it may have been the December meeting, um, that both parties provide to you a performance agreement um, related to the sale of the property. You do see one from SWCI, who is one of the uh, interested parties. Uh, the meat of it is he's going to pay for the survey, $1,800 an acre. He will have, after 24 months, one leasable sit site let on me, the property. Let me ask you this. I don't like the way that's worded. Within, this is what the buyer is proposing. Within 24 months of closing, the purchaser, the buyer, will have established at least one leasable space. I like to see that say leased. Anything's a leasable space. Got it. I want a lease, but is that sufficient, y'all? Is that is that? Well, I, is, guess he, I agree, but he can't hang his hat on something that is actually at market, technically, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, but no, a leasable space meaning it needs to be an actual structure correct not a i think it needs to be clarified so he didn't well I, at least a space for somebody to park trailers space behind kangaroo express right yeah, now space and sitting there as green grass land. <laughs> <laughs> i think it should say a structure yeah. one one improvement but i don't think you we can dictate that it must be leased at that time because yeah, you're, you're at the mercy of the market. Mercy of the market. you are but the only thing i remind everybody is this property is owned by the people of blackstone and we had another proposal you do have another that proposal. It, of course, it's it's way out there, but there was revenue on an annual basis. I have copies of it for everybody, and I'm guessing we're in, talking about this in public. They were they were offering about thirty six thousand dollars a year as a lease payment for them to install a seven megawatt solar set farm on that property that would serve obviously the the, the Mr. Carlos building and then sell the difference back into the system through Southside. I've talked to him. He's called me, but he hasn't provided me anything else in addition because I think he's still trying to work out the arrangements with either Southside Dominion, Southside Electric. But uh, I mean, on Mr. Walker's side, in all fairness, he presented it when it was due. He's provided by February first. Were both parties given a deadline and told mm -hmm. the deadline? Yeah. And um, if you want to give him one more shot and say you've got until March fifteenth and see if he'll do anything different, I just I spoke to him on the phone. And the gentleman indicated, I just don't have anything additional to share at this time by February 1st. No, so a month ago. the proposal before the council, Mr. Walker wants to, to, to buy the uh, 35 acres at 1800 bucks an acre, which is what he's bought land for previously uh, in the industrial park. This would be the last of the in property that could be industrial. But the fact of the matter is, for those of y'all who hear that and get sad, there really is no industrial land there because we don't have three-phase power. Um, the town does, but Southside Electric wants right. a tremendous amount of money right. uh, for three-phase power to be run there. And, so do you want to go with the bird in hand who has submitted a proposal, and we could say that we want more, we want more specificity in this, this lease space, or do you want to open it up and extend it and see if the solar proposal has merit? It, it, I love money, as you know, but when it comes to fairness, I think it's a big thing. Um, and yes, that when we were in closed session, that thirty-seven thousand dollars a year. I mean, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. but, he but, he didn't, back up. but he didn't send anything back. Why don't we wait till the ninth of March? I do think we need to send this yeah. back and get more. Mm -hmm. Good deal with it. But I yeah. mean, if we send that back up, why not? You know, give him what, what yeah. he's been right. denied for the fifty. Agreed. Or but just in the back of my head, I'm gonna keep it there, saying, "All right, well, this guy he actually submitted it. Trust me, I was all for Mr. Yeah. Ewitt that night. Mm -hmm. Let's sign away right now." Well, so just so we're clear, we, we're talking about fairness, which we all like. Will it, does this council believe it would be fair to do two things, to get Mr. Walker to fine-tune his, his letter of assurance, his, 
And would it also be fair to also reach out and say, hey, Mr. Solar Guy? A hard this date. Is a hard this is the last call. March 15th, and you've got a 17th right. meeting. So you okay. can do it that way. Does council believe that's doing both those actions is fair? Yes, sir. I think so. Yeah. All right. Then um, I so think March my common consent. March 15th, is that what you said? Is that cool with y'all? Yeah. Good to get a meeting, I think, on the 17th. We've got to see something. Yeah. And it's got to have some me meaning to it. Mm -hmm. Not here's a letter, I'll have you more later. And Mr. Walker, I like I said, we, he's been good. We love, we love FWCI. But I just think this is sort of vague. Um, mm -hmm. Bless you. All right, we'll move with common consent. Moving forward. All right, moving right along to the housing grant. This is good news, folks. This is another good one. Mr. So, uh, see attached notice from the Commonwealth Regional Council that the town will receive $434,850 in grant funds for the construction of three single-family workforce housing projects. There were three projects awarded in this district. Uh, one was Habitat Humanity. They got almost a million dollars. We got 434, and then there was a, a private firm in Cambridge that's going to do some apartments downtown, and they picked up $250,000. In downtown Cambridge. Downtown yeah, Cambridge. Um, kudos to, to uh, Chastity. She worked on this. Um, housing's our thing, but keep in mind, these are houses that aren't necessarily for specifically low moderate income folks. These have different income requirements, and these will be owned homes. These are not going to be homes that we build to rent. These will be owned by individuals who need to qualify and do all those kinds of things. And these are folks that don't necessarily have very low incomes, but may not have an income enough to purchase the average market home in the town of Blackstone. So we're looking at homes. You can see three houses, 430,000. And where are you, you said this before, where do you envision those three homes being built in Blackstone? Well, I know we do a lot in Mr. Miller's district, but the town own, is part owner of the old Tucker place down there at the end of Broad Street. If you remember that really ratty old blue house that was down there, we own half, Southside Outreach owns half. Southside Outreach bought a parcel from Dove's Homes through a tax sale that's at the intersection of Hurt Street and Broad Street. Right across the street from Mr. Hills. Yeah, okay. right. yeah. Right it's a vacant lot there. There's a house burned down some years ago. Okay. Southside Outreach bought that at a tax sale. Okay. And the we we believe it would be appropriate to go to Board of Zoning Appeals and split it into two parcels. So that could be the three. If not, the town also owns a piece of property, and I don't know the history, but we have had a title search that Tessie did one time before for the old playground property that was given to the town by Levi Strauss. That's not doing anything right now, which is actually at the intersection of Dillard and Fitzgerald Street. It's a pretty steep lot if you've ever been down through there, uh, but those, were, those are the lots that we already have that we wouldn't have to go out and buy something or another lot. Do we need to approve these grants or are these just informational? Again, I don't have a formal grant agreement, so uh, I'm asking uh, for you guys to hold until I have something. Great news, y'all. Great news. So mm -hmm. this is grant so people can get a house built for free? No, they got to they got to pay a mortgage on it, right. and it's our expectation that those payments can come back and either reimburse us so that we can put it back into our housing programs. And that's like a revolving loan fund. Program income. And it's not a. From what Philip has informed me, it's not a reduced. So if the, if the house costs one hundred twenty five thousand dollars, they're going to pay one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Right. It's not a reduced amount based on income. No, but the interest rates may be lower because of the program and that sort of thing. There may be terms and conditions that make it more favorable. Maybe they don't have to come with 20% down. All those kinds of terms and conditions to get somebody who can qualify, who doesn't necessarily have $25,000 cash laying around, those kinds of things. So I would think the biggest part of it would be helping with down payment assistance and um, probably supplemented interest rates, to tell you the truth. I dare say it's not going to be a market rate. It'll be something less than a market How will rate. the town of Blackstone uh, openly and fairly – seek those who want to participate well there's going to be a lot of people who want to yeah, participate I so to i think the housing rehab board is going to have to do it if council would like to be the decider because this is a little different right. i can bring it to the full council or oh, give right. it to we'll a committee we'll let the housing rehab board what? Take care you of don't that. want to do it we, we'll delegate that that's right. we have a housing rehab <laughs> board <laughs> Yeah, I think we how about this? Because the Housing Rehab Board and these East End grants, we kind of move and just report to you after we've moved. Why don't we do this, that the awards and any of these kinds of things would be approved by council? It wouldn't be bad. I think that would be Ultimately approved. We'll get a recommendation for you guys and then bring it to you. Yeah, I think that's we'll good that. policy. Good deal. Very good, very good. Moving right along, if there were other questions, we have, a, uh, we have a ruling at the last council meeting we had a debate about who has to pay meals tax i mean lodging tax tom wilkinson was right and colonel tom was right if you're gonna if you're gonna book a place for 35 days you're exempt from all meals tax we uh, lodging tax we had thought earlier that you had to pay the first 30. 
So lodging tax is only for those 30 days or fewer, correct? 30 or fewer. And I confirmed it with Raj. Mr. Patel, who's with Blackstone Hilltop Partners, he said that's pretty typical. If it's 90 days or 30 days, because I think it was 90 in many places before, if he hit the 91st day, there's no zero. Zero's paid. And he confirmed that's how it, it is done at his other hotels. But we need we, we delayed action on this in January. I believe we need uh, action to to define transients mm -hmm. as those staying for 30 or fewer days. 30 or fewer days. To adopt the ordinance. To adopt the ordinance. I need a motion from council. It's been, we had a public hearing already. All right. Mr. Ready. Nash has moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Morgan is seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The yeah. ayes have it. We have all these developments coming about. It's going to be counting. Auditing is going to be tough. Bear, but it's going to take a lot more. It's, it's going to make meals tax back. look easy. It's going to make meals tax look easy. I mean, how do you go to Raj or how do you go to Dennis at Clay's Assisted Living and go, all right, well, how many of your people stay 30 days or less? Well, the yeah. good thing about it is fewer units or fewer people to deal with than meals tax. Correct. So it's a little easier. And I, I think these guys, for the most part, between McCormick and Raj and I, I assume Dennis, um, I think these guys are pretty – pretty into this kind of system and I think that uh, I don't think it'll be too hard to get it to do uh, get it done but I think Dave McCormick does use a property management company here locally and I think we can get the data from them pretty easily um, I think Raj is pretty used to it he you know he confirmed what what Tom said the other day in that meeting that no if it's 31 days it's all exempt so well, that's, that's it, great. That's I do great. think Brittany's gonna have her hands full uh, tracking the thing it's gonna be Unfinished business number 10 is the ViewMac agreement, what we discussed previously, Mr. Vernorbeck. This is the town is doing something unusual. We are actually in the uh, providing some assistance to the tune of six hundred some thousand dollars in infrastructure improvements for basically a $12 million project that's going to bring a hotel to Blackstone. So, you know, the, the town went out and borrowed a revenue anticipation note last year in $600,000. The revenue anticipation was that we would get a grant for $600,000 to the Industrial Revitalization Fund administered by the Department of Housing and Community Development. We have been successful doing so. There are certain things that we have to do, like put up a sign and this performance agreement. I can't, Tessie drew it up, but we used the city of, or the town of Bedford's agreement because they had one very, very similar. So um, this is the agreement that we propose to uh, present. And basically it's gotta be a hotel for 10 years and there's a discussion on the prorated reimbursement if it's not a hotel for 10 years. Okay, and it's uh, Tessie gave us the methodology where you, the denominator is ten, and then you figure out what the year is, and then if it's a partial year, then you divide it by three hundred sixty days, and that's included in there. Raj has executed both, and it's our expectation that uh, we would provide this to the Department of Housing and Community Development, and ultimately have the mayor execute as well. Item four it says they shall create and maintain a minimum of thirty five jobs. jobs. Is that their number, or is that the number from? No, that was the number that was originally given to the Tobacco Commission. That's where the 35 came. So Raj has said the 35. And remember, it's not 35 jobs. It's 35 full-time equivalents. Okay. It's full-time equivalent jobs. So there may be more people there, but the part-timer may count as a half or a 60%. And Which is still great. I mm -hmm. mean, for Blackstone, that's very good. How, how is progress over there? I've seen activity. Do you mm -hmm. think this, they're still going to be able to rent rooms in May, or is that going to be the nah, they, No, I think it'll probably be later than that. I, I, I've... I can't say Raj has told me it's going to be different, but he said, well, we may have a soft opening in May and then maybe a harder opening later in the summer, maybe in July or, or August. Good stuff, folks. Good stuff. You see the performance agreement in front of you? There are actually two documents. Uh, there's a uh, performance agreement and a restriction agreement as prepared by Tessie Bacon, our attorney. Take them separately? Take them one time? Take them together? Do you want them separate, Tessie, or together is fine? You know what I mean. Move to approve both. And authorize the mayor to execute because it is his signature. So moved. <clears throat> Motion has uh, been made by Mr. Nash, seconded by Mr. Miller. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Unfinished business number 11. We have a bid for the Nottoway Gators football concession stand. One bid from 4 H Construction in the amount of $99,800. Well, I can tell you, you got $50,000 to do it. Now, this is a stripped down four walls and a floor and a ceiling and a roof. And I can't tell you I've got incoming revenues as we do with fuel sales. 
I think we probably, in my personal opinion and judgment, we probably need to reject this. It's going to put the project behind. Um, but you got 50000 cash that we can put to it now. We have asked the county um, to match that $50,000 in cash. Yes, ma'am. Pardon? Just one. Just one. Just, just got one bid. Yeah. Does it seem awful steep? I think we should get more than one. But we only we advertise it locally in the newspaper. We have a set of drawings put together. Right Construction costs. Yeah. And I've talked to Philip right before this meeting. It may not happen this year because construction costs are so crazy. So I'm going to go out and seek some more bid. Pardon? The downstairs. Well, I don't know what specifically drove it up, but it's a building that would mirror the concession stand bathrooms that we have over there. So it would be split face block on the first floor, framing on the second floor, green metal roof, and yellow siding. I just so think that's a little, little steep. It'll look exactly like okay, I mean, appearance-wise the other one, but this one is rectangular rather than it, square. You know, just, Provide some assistance. Right, all we got to do is put it back off of bids. I mean, 99000 is too much to pay. It's a lot. Just put yeah. it back that's, off of bids. If that's council's pleasure, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I it's, it's going to put your project back a ways, and I can't promise it. it'll be ready for football season. The field will be, Council, and the goalpost will be up. We need a motion to reject the sole bid then. Yeah. Yeah. Motion made by Mr. Morgan, seconded by Mr. Nash. All in favor of rejecting the only bid, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Yeah. Um, I don't know if putting it out to bid this month is going to make that big of a difference just simply because. Well, I can I can gauge some folks. I gave a set of plans out to a local contractor today who was incidentally in my office, and, um, you know, 99 may be the number. But you got 50. We have made an appeal to the county in their budget f to match it at 50, but I don't think Mr. Costin this morning was prepared or able to tell us definitively yes or no. But at the end of the day, I think we need to reject it, see what we can do. Is there something we can yeah, take no. off, do ourselves? Um, we're bringing in that we're creating our own parks and rec department, which is a county function, I guess you'd say. So that's why I stand firm on the fact that I think we've got to kind of make it up on the costs and stuff like that. Right. So. All right. Well, you rejected the bid, and um, they can still play football without a concession stand. Uh, the field will be fancy. It'll be nice. But I, I will say this. They've got some good – I've been to some Gators games. They have some really good announcers, so it does add a lot to the, for the kids and the fans. But Do they use an announcer's booth now at the high school? They do. Yeah, they do that. we use the one at the high school. My question is this. Okay, uh, you said you're going to put it off a of bid again. How soon can you put it out? Tomorrow morning. I mean, I can put an ad in the paper. Um, I think I still, because of the the cost, I don't think we have an option to just go out and call three or four guys. I think we got to rebid it because if we're going to be over the statutory amount, it's got to be a sealed bid. I can put it out. I mean, can you save me get, some space tomorrow on the yeah, paper? Yeah. I can do it. But if we get the 50000 from the county, we'll be okay. I think it'll be, and, and it may be less. And remember, this is just the four walls and the floor. The town staff is going to do stuff like wire it, insulate it, air condition, all that kind of stuff. 15, 20. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You that's know, a lot. I mean, that's all they're doing is putting the wall over. That is too much money. It was, it, it was a lot. That's all they're doing. All right, let's town manager has kind of sent to seek bids and tell them if you know a friend that likes to build stuff, tell them that they may have a job in Blackstone. Um, there's a license. Got to be licensed and sure. Well, well that, that too. But, uh, Let's get some folks excited about it. I do want to uh, go off script briefly just because I see uh, Bobby Thomas is here tonight, and it is March of this year, and I've heard a lot of people talk about tourism. And I just wonder if this, this council has a will to just advertise, help wanted, to see if we can get applications rolling for part-time guide that would serve as a guide for the museum, for the Source Tavern and Carriage Museum. Would it be too? But that'd be premature to get that ball rolling because I'm hearing a lot of buzz in the community about. Well, I think uh, I'll share with you. We met with DBI uh, this week, and Eric, I think, had made some some preliminary announcements that uh, it was his intention that we wanted to look at a tourism armory, DBI, one person full time position, and create that as a a full time town employed position. If we want to accelerate that, we can certainly do that and uh, try to do it as, as a full-time person. I, I just want to see what you want to I'm not asking for y'all to hire somebody. Not, or I just, mm -hmm. could, we, could we maybe just throw some, put together for approval on March 9th? Mm -hmm. and J-O-A? Well, just a, an ad for the type of person we're looking for. We have a job description that's been provided by DBI, and I can share that with Eric and share we're it with the tourism season, committee. You know, and, mm -hmm. and I am here. I am catching I'm hearing a lot in the people in the community. We've got, we've got antique stores downtown. 
Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I went and bought something at the antique mall on a Saturday, and I was, I was mm -hmm. blown away in, Feb on, in February how busy that, that place brings a lot of people to Blackstone, mm -hmm. and I, we're getting killed in the arena of public opinion on those museums not being open. I mean, I just, I'm just telling you. And um, I just want to, and Bobby, seeing you here trigger that, and, and Bobby, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for stay, sticking with the town, and I, th I think, mm -hmm. think the wine festival's coming back in October, I hear. I've heard rumors of that, and just I'm kind of working on it. It's just finding wineries who are available, right? Because the, pan the pandemic took right. some of them out of business. So, and I hate to spring that on council at the last minute, but I just it's March, and next month it'll be April, and I just think we're getting to that time. Does council want to hold off? Just get the ball rolling? I just I've talked to no one about this other than one member of council today. I texted and said, "What do you think?" Yes, Mr. Mr. Yes. Just, on, just a, um, for a minute. On Saturday, just to give you an idea, there was a total of 108 people that went through um, the antique mall. Imagine if you had 25 to 50 of those people just coming in from museums. If it had been open on the weekend. Right. So that's that's something to think about because donations that can come in will be going to to the town. Right. If we can get people in there. It's all the above. It's like the food thing that the chamber's doing. It's the art walk. It's everything. It's, it's, it's Gator football. Gator football will bring families here for four hours each Saturday. And some of them, not all of them will come downtown. Some of them are going to eat a burger at the concession stand. But it's all the above. It's, 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 it's motion. You want motion. And, and I, I, my sister and I are working with Longwood College to look at interns. That's the key. summer and during probably holidays. So we're in the talks. They are very interested. So it's just trying to figure out, know, sit down with them and get a, a broader understanding. Because even to the point that I can get the archaeological uh, department to provide maybe a summer camp program uh, for kids. Well, can we? I, I'm not hearing. I'm not seeing. I don't. I, mm -hmm. And I apologize. I don't like to spring it on people, but I just had a busy day today, and I should talk to y'all sooner. <laughs> Could we just agree by common consent that we really want to move in that direction, if it's fi in the budget or if it's before the budget? Absolutely, um, move in that direction. I think that's our goal. Right. I think my concern, Billy's the one he reached out to me today. My only concern is the fact that we've done it part time before. Right. The same businesses were open then, so I don't know. Maybe the foot traffic is more, but we didn't achieve that goal then. It has to be a full time dedicated person to this, and we, and that's us too. We've got to be dedicated 100% to that position either as well. We can't just say, oh, we'll just throw 20 bucks an hour at them and hope that they get something. No, we, Philip, all of us have right. to step up and say we're in this 100%. I was thinking something to start this year to go Thursday, Friday, 10 to 5, Saturday, Sunday, 10 to 5, or some, 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 some you know, just not, not do seven days a week. Is that, but I think of most folks coming to Blackstone, it's later in the weekend. Some of the week, weekends are, are must, certainly Saturday. Sunday, Sunday could be a bus, except during Christmas. But, but I just think, I, can we, I, again, I appreciate your indulgence. Can we all agree that we want to make that happen sooner than later? I mean, I'm, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. All right, all right. Well, let's. let's I'm coming back from my. Uh, hey, you, you coming back to Tennessee? Um, make sure. Pencil in March 9th for some sort of report. Just, just, just. Maybe we may have a, a add together a, jo a job description because you know they will hire somebody. Yes, Beverly Ams. We also have got to look at the fact that we're going to have in a Blackstone opening up this summer. Say that one more time. We also have to look at the fact that we're going to have the in at Blackstone. So we're actually going to have hotel space here in town that can also feed into the, to the tourism and the museum. Very good point. Very good point. I've been talking with Adam Perry with that group in the calendar, and they're looking at creating destination weekends. I think we're going to be surprised. I think a lot of us think that that's all going to be all this stuff going on. It's just going to be military and fantasy related. I think we're going to learn that between funerals, weddings, and class reunions, there's that hotel's going to be busier than a lot of people think. It's not going to just be military. They've already had over 100 wedding planners contact us. Really? Oh, wow. Wow. That's okay. Yeah. Well, let's put it on the front burner. Let's let's talk about it again March 9th. And I apologize for going off script. Calling an audible. On those nights, um, going to ongoing projects. This will be brief under dilapidated housing. Mr. Vanoebeck, we've got a 
Two of the structures that we discussed at the um, last council meeting, I have been in touch with the owners of Velvet Textiles. They did not like, not like the fact that uh, uh, blighted was the definition that I used for their building. Um, amazingly, S.B. Cox showed up within a few days with a demolition permit to tear down the the two or three story portion of the building that would I don't think the owners are on site enough to know what the condition of it was and he was quite shocked when I told him you've got to tear that down you cannot put a new roof on it as it is so SB Cox has received or has applied for and received a, a, a building permit or excuse me a zoning permit from us and I assume a building permit but I'm not going to wait six months until the building permit expires I, I think that certainly can't be a ruse but the uh, cost to dem demolish was eighty two thousand dollars that they provided to us uh one of the other properties we spoke about and i have spoken with the property owner on Nottaway avenue a lot of busted windows a lot of uh um, places in the crawl space doors that are gone all that kind of thing i did speak with the owner the owner said that they would take care of it i gave them 30 days before the blighted enforcement would begin and as a courtesy to them uh, we're still and i'll be honest with you the other building is uh, the old uh, hardware store downtown it has fallen into great disrepair and i think uh so everybody knows that uh, that building's failure would affect a lot of other buildings because they're all attached with common wall so i'm going to be pursuing pretty heavily improvements to the craddock is it craddock terry no dillard crawley. dillard crawley building uh downtown which has uh an excessive leak um in the ceiling i think the roof is on the verge of no longer being roof and um, that one will certainly be front burner i think we've i think i have uh, tamed the tiger at velvet textile i think we have uh, at least a starting relationship with the property owner not away uh, so tomorrow morning to let you know that the dillard crawley building will be uh, declared blighted and the property owner will get a, a formal have we had yeah. any communication with the, the property owner at dillard crawley not at this time okay. the, the broad street side you look at it when it's raining it's there's interest in that building there is interest in the building. I, uh, yeah, I think the price may be uh, prohibitive. Well, that's good to know. That's, that's a, the blight is an ongoing battle, folks. It affects everybody throughout this town. Uh, Velvet Textile, you mentioned well, that one portion of the property. That's being demolished, and they also have to fix the roof on the portion that used to be uh, the old sign shop yeah. on the front. I've, I've texted him pictures of that. You can see the shingles buckling on the, and, and the uh, structure is exposed. Uh, in addition... I did inform him because of the number of uh, leaks that have been taking place in their uh, fire sprinkler system. That's unmetered usage. So from now on, additional leaks that the fire department gets called out to or we see running out the front door going out on Church Street, uh, the town will then be billing them for water usage. Just one number there. Um, so were they demoing that two-story level? Are they going to replace the roof or is it just going to be remain open to the... As far as I know, it would be remaining open. It would just be the slab. They'll take it down. The building around it on all four sides is open to the elements. No, I wouldn't think that would be the case. They can't do that. Town code does require that it's not open to the elements, so they're going to have to come up with an arrangement and maybe they only take the top off and leave those walls on the side. But I'd have to find out. They cannot leave it open to the elements. No, yeah, I we appreciate that. I know mm. it's a thankless job. Sure, it ain't you, perfect. Those folks aren't happy to hear from you when you call those, folks. they dislike it very much. Um, we have. According to our report, I'm sure it's improved by now. Two outstanding meals tax establishments. Is that still the case? Are they? It is not improved. It is not improved. So we have two folks that are passed. And they were due the 20th. Overdue. Technically, the 22nd, which oh. is a holiday. Okay. So um, they're not quite a week behind yet. So I'm hoping those was from January. So wait. So they're six weeks behind. Just FYI reminder, the restaurants aren't paying the meals tax. They're collecting the meals tax. Um, yeah. We've had a meal, meal tax sure for 30 we years. Do it even across the board for everybody, and it's by the policy. Even Stephen, nothing under street improvement projects, although we've got a lot of street work coming up later this year. Mm -hmm. Under Rigglesworth Stadium, uh, just to update, Mr. Benorbeck, uh, concrete work has been done. You're going to be putting up stadium uh Renaissance. Antique lights. Antique um, lights. Concession stand clearly is going to take a little longer. Fencing will be going back up, and uh, as part of our secondary budget, we'll be paving that portion of Jackson Street adjacent to this curb. That'll be done when Colony Construction comes to town. What kind of seed of grass are y'all using on the football field? I'm just curious. I, it, my understanding, they're getting the grass and the seed and the fertilizer from Greg Young. You know what kind? Is it the, the, not doing Bermuda? Bermuda. No, it'll be I don't good. think it's Bermuda, but it's the same grass that we have in the baseball field. Okay. 
Is that grass hold up pretty good? Yeah, well, yeah, that's so. very nice. We spend a lot of money on fertilizing and keeping it pretty. Now, the complaints I get from the wreck is it's so thick and lush. The ball stops. Ball, ball stops ball in ball the field. Down. So uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case with football. Yeah, but uh, laws that don't stop the runner from running. I don't think that's the case. Right. But it'll stop a softball if it's not. Under East End, home. number five, unfinished business. We've got contractors completing one home, and you're seeking bids on two more properties. Mm -hmm. Sewer installation is complete, and one block of water main remains to be Constructed. On Harris Street, that's right. On Harris Street? It's yeah. the last block of Harris Street. They're doing an excellent job. Let the record show. We, um, remember, there's yet another element of street improvements and drainage, carbon gutter. Um, we're waiting on the plans um, from B&B &B for that. I saw a hand raised. Yeah. I'm sorry, some, yes. yes. I have, um, come, on, come on forward. Good evening, everyone. I came, um, I live on Stoke Street, and um, I have problem. well, I don't have a problem, but it looks bad over there, a lot of trash. Um, I pick up mines in front of my house, but up and down the street, there's a lot of trash. I went to the town, um, get someone to pick the trash up, but what do we do? What is your name, ma'am? My name is Shirley Epps. Shirley, yes, Shirley, yes. Um, <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. I can get the guys right now. This time of the year, we're not doing a lot of digging. Okay. I'll give them a work order. But, on this. but yeah. you had somebody, you had an employee that would go pick up trash, you said last month, but that ploy, they're no longer with us. No mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think the guys that work with Wallace typically turn down houses or doing stuff. We're not doing a lot of that right now. Uh huh. We can spend a day picking up trash. And I think Dan's had them picking up trash. You know where Dan's tenant site is over here on Brown Street? McCallum property. That's a big trash collection. Is it litter from litter bugs, people throwing trash, or is it trash from people's trash cans? I really don't know, but it's a lot of trash. Over there. We need to we need to catch litter bugs and yeah. make them an example. Because I can't huh? see. And it's not coming from the contractor. No, this is no, no. Right now. We're not doing no. Uh -huh. right now. Okay. Yeah, the thing about when people, for some reason, if, if there's litter, it begets more litter. If you keep mm -hmm. it clean, that's the best bet. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. I can do work with them tomorrow. I don't think it's any big deal. But there was a dumping site. If you remember, we tore down that old garage where they used to paint cars. Remember that? Some of the dogs do his thing. Right behind that man. There's Yes, trash there. Uh -huh. well, we thank you. For, okay, thank th you. Thanks for addressing us on that matter. Um, no, item number six, weatherization. We've not yet been notified by Nottoway County as to availability of their program income funds from their housing grant project on Shoot Road 30 years ago. We did discuss this this morning, Ted and I, and he did not have a, a formal answer for me. So I think that there's... Um, Still, some some time to wait from the, the county for for a negative or a affirmative response. Under new business, we have several requests for metal detecting, and the policy has been: if you want to metal detect on town property, have to be approved by council. And we have some requests: uh, three total for the old school property in Sea Park. It's two people that it's two people, and one wants Sea Park and the ball field, and one wants the ball field. That is correct. I don't. We can't tell them they can't go on the same days, right? I mean, if they want to be there on the same... We have one request from Don Williamson of Crew. He wants to do three days during the month of March. He wants the old school property. Um, and then the other person is... Robert Foster. Robert Foster. He wants Sea Park and some of the school property. And both gentlemen have offered... They get to keep what they find, but they've offered from a historic <coughs> history standpoint, sharing with us that they find anything unusual. School probably be okay, but I don't think it'd be a good idea to start digging around Sea Park. Do we have permission? Obviously, we lease the property from the county. We're in charge of maintenance, general maintenance. Yeah. But is it under our purview to allow someone to go and metal detect? I don't know. I think we'd probably be okay. The rule is that they have to repair whatever holes they dig, right? And of course, we all know mm -hmm. that once you dig a hole, it's never the same. Um, and, well, they did, and the gentleman, the first Don, Don. I think Don both, of, both of them have spoke to someone with the county. Um, I think the buildings guy. Robbie Templeton. Yes, they both had spoken to him and they gave permission, but he wanted to get permission from us as well. I think it's fine because, like I say, I mean, I mean what, I think we've what, always said in the past that as long as it's not the tavern location, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Sea so. Park has they have had people in there before. before. I we can, got a question with Rigglesworth. They got to check in and check out. I had a question with Rigglesworth. Now, you talking about digging over there and looking at Rigglesworth. I mean, what about 
These kids playing no, not the ball field, not the, the, not, not the rec complex. Where the playground used to be. Oh, where the trees yeah. fell over yeah. and all that. Yeah. Maybe they'll find a 1864 penny or something. Well, if they do, that's the most picked over piece of property <laughs> that I know of for metal detecting. So if they do find something, you know. What is council's pleasure? Do you wish to grant permission when they have to follow the policy? They have to check in. They have to check out. Um, they can't just. I have one. Yes. Is there any liability issue in that? Well, from, at least from the, from the school perspective that, that we're leasing that property? If we have uh, renter's insurance on it, we may just want to check with our insurance agent to make sure that the policy covers invited guests on the property too. But I would assume, you know, that it would, but it wouldn't hurt to check. What if our form, if I, if I <clears throat> say I'm coming in the metal detect and I fill the form out, what if our form said I hereby agree that I hold the town of Blackstone harmless? I think it does say that. Does that have any legal merit? Yeah, that would be helpful. Too. Okay. All right. You say it or you think it or does, Jim? I would say in the front portion of Sea Park, I believe Philip has got. Yeah, we're we're spending money on fertilizing, so maybe we so keep it to the rear be, part. Yeah, <coughs> Don't we have irrigation in there too? Or you there's to irrigation in there, and but it's not working. Way it, obsolete. It's yeah. super obsolete. It was put in 30 years ago, 28 Third years ago. From the gazebo back would be fine. All right, so is council willing to uh, grant permission from the gazebo eastward? And the old school property, uh, excluding the recreational area, obviously. Inside the fence. Yeah. What is council's pleasure on that? So moved. Uh, Mr. Nash has moved. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Jones is second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, before we go on, so it does say the person has to sign, does hereby agree to assume all responsibility and liability for my person and my belongings while on the town of Blackstone's property. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Very good. Moving right along, to, we have a request uh, to seek a request for proposals for delinquent tax collection attorneys. Well, we've been using Mr. Elliott for many, many years as the county has used. And I think we've gotten to the point where uh, these properties are three years delinquent, if I'm not mistaken, when you submit them. And it's taking another ooh, year, and year and a half, two years. And a good example was the one that Brian, behind Brian Wright's building, um, we had asked him to go ahead and sell that one. Um, and I was really shocked. He told us it was $6,000 extra if we wanted to have it. So I didn't think he was very cooperative with us. Uh, I don't think we can just pick somebody without some formal process or because there may be another attorney. Tessie may want to start doing our delinquent property. I don't know. But uh, instead of picking one right now, I'm asking that we go to an RFP and we put it out. And uh, I have been contacted by another attorney in uh, Mecklenburg County who has interest in doing it. So um, I'd like to do an RFP and uh, see what else is out there. And it may be the one that, that Brittany uh, included. There was a proposal in there from a firm, but I think we're premature, just so you know, to, to pick somebody. I think we need to we need to process it a little bit. I'd entertain a motion to authorize the town manager to issue an RFP. So move. I'll give the motion to Mr. Jones, second to Mr. Morgan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Last, under new business, we have a request from the Nottoway High School Lady Cougars to use the batting cages on rainy days at Rigglesworth and, the Marsh, and Marshall Martin. If the Rec Association has blessed it, to me it's a no brainer. And no, no, would not be charged. I would say no. Okay. There are folks. They won't have access to the stadium lights because they said they won't use the field. So it's in the cage. Just in the cage. So Ms. Jones has moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Miller has seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. I see no request for committee referrals. Under the mayor's minute, I want to throw this out there. I wish our deputy chief and I just, just came to me. I'm getting, more, we've got new folks coming to town, and I've got some folks that are asking about the, um, something I've always believed in strongly this, the fire siren. Like when they're daytime, you know, I think right now the siren only blows from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. 7, should be 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? That's what it's supposed to be. But they were asking about, do you need to send a fire siren for wrecks? And I explained that, well, it's about the emergency vehicles, whether they're going to fire. I just want to give you a heads up. You may start getting more chatter about that. I've had new folks mm -hmm. ask me about that. No one here tonight, but just uh, that seems to be an interesting phenomenon among our new, uh, our new folks. Um, so anyway, maybe they'll get used to it, but I wanted to bring that to your attention. Any questions on the police report? You have that in your packet. We have a, do we have a, um, oh, this is the second part of the meeting where citizens are allowed to ask questions. 
make comments, anything you heard tonight you didn't understand. Uh, this is an opportunity, too, before we have to go into closed session about something potentially unpleasant. Yes, I see a hand up, but I don't recognize you. It's Ellen Epps. Ellen Epps, me and my, my 2020 vision. <laughs> I, I saw a mistake on the, um, res, the reservation request for Town Square. It says June 26th. We should say the 25th. Well, the pink, on the packet that you all You're have. fine. Yeah. And um, also, um, the Juneteenth committee wanted to do a fundraiser for Juneteenth, and we wanted to use the basketball courts on March the 26th. Okay. And um, have like a police presence because um, just for security purposes. I think that should require a motion from council. What are the hours on March 26th? It's like a, it's like a basketball tournament, like benefit? Yes, yes three on three. Three on three? Um, just make it all day. Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion to grant the Juneteenth committee's request <laughs> to close the basketball court for a tur benefit tournament on Saturday, March the 26th, 26th the I, entire day. I think we're set at 9 or 10 o'clock on the, on the lighting. Yes. So that'll dictate how long you can go. Yeah. I'd entertain a, a motion if someone wants to make it. Nine, isn't it? I think it's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock is when the, the lights help won't it, come the on. The lights go off at 9. Yeah. You know, the basketball courts are lighted, and you can have light, and so you can do it in the evening. But just so you know, the lights are programmed so they won't stay on after 9 o'clock. Okay. All right. Mrs. Jones has moved, and who seconded? Second. Ms. Williams has seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'll appoint a three-member team from council to participate. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, do we need to close the session tonight? Yes. Anyone they else want to address council? Yes, Beverly Ams. All right, I have two things. Sure. Okay. Um, First of all, to address the Juneteenth thing again, um, what is the uh, street closures for Juneteenth? It is as it was last year, South Main, I believe, from Irvin to Tavern. Mm -hmm. Does that include side streets? Mm -hmm. I think we could let cross streets open. Yep. That's correct. Cross Street at Broad was open and... Just Broad? Or just Broad. Just Broad, broad Street. Yeah. Can we leave Maple open as well? You mean maple all the way across from east to west, crossing the street? I think the problem with that is I think last year there was a book sale going on over there, so I think it needs a little coordination about where those people potentially could go. But I think that's We certainly uh, don't want to hurt anybody's yeah. business. Right. I mean, that's, that's what I'm pointing at because mm -hmm. you've got a business on the corner that uses parking down that side street, and you've got sanitary barbershops that uses parking on the side street. And for them to be able to get to I think we got time. I think but, let's try to coordinate. Cause it, like I said, I, we don't want any event, great, big, whatever, to, to, to hurt business. I know that's one of the reasons we opened on Broad because the jewelry store, mm -hmm. that's a big, you know, for retail, that's, that's one of, that's his biggest day of the week. And I imagine Santa Day Barbershop has a pretty busy Saturday. Um, we can all get, work, work this out. But I don't know about the safety of vehicles being able to cross Main at Maple and let, unless, just thinking out loud, unless, unless there's fewer vendors this year, which I don't anticipate, I, I just don't know. Um, let's, I let's think good minds can together work something out. Okay. Second thing. Yes. Um, I love the Barbara Thompson Bridge because we always call it a Barbara's Bridge. But we recognize Barbara for the work she did. What about Constance Wynn yep. and Al Tucker? I'm glad you mentioned that. John Neal and... Jerry Look. Wilson, uh, you know, the people who had longevity on this board and who were the firsts. Yes, well, recognize mm -hmm. and recognize the, rest. the answer to your question is yes, by all means. The Neal family, we have been working with and in consultation with uh, a some sort of memorial, uh, might be in these chambers or outside. Um, as far as Constance Tucker Wynn, a lot of folks don't remember these things, but in the year two, June 2000, Blackstone's newest street is Tucker Lane. That was named after her family, in honor of her family. And Constance Tucker Wynn basically presided that day. And we had a gospel singer from Washington, D.C. Um, now, that's not Constance per se. Yeah, it needs to be Constance. I understand that, Ms. Ames. And there, there's a whole slew of Alfred, Mr. Tucker. John, I had him. Um, John Neal. Yep. Yeah. But, and maybe we could form a committee. I will caution this. I, th I think you're on to something good, and I'd rather celebrate too many people than not enough. Mm -hmm. 
but I think it will require thought and um, you making sure people aren't left out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but the Barber's Bridge, I mean, was just, was just a natural. And that was my idea because previous councils joked because she would always say, when's my bridge going to get fixed? Oh, when's my... That was her project. That was her project. Mm -hmm. John Neal's big thing, a lot of people don't remember this, John Neal is the reason the town of Blackstone only has two billboards loud in town. Because John Neal was tired, he sat right there, and he was tired about billboards being neglected by out-of-town firms, falling in disrepair, mm -hmm. 